welcome to the session greeting of the day in today's class we are going to talk about the process controllers in the previous classes we have seen about the various pid controllers and various other digital controllers we have seen such as microprocessors microcontrollers plcs those things we have defined we know that and the one more process of uh, the process controllers are there that we have to see what is this use of this process control the name says the process which is going to be happen it should be controlled in such a way it takes place at the right configurations so that uh, we are in need of this process controls in a control system a process control over output of a system is to be obtained this word we are working for process controllers this word the process controls are done for those requirement we are going for the process control therefore a continuous monitoring of such system is essential why it is continuous monitoring is needed i am driving a car for example i want to maintain a 50 km per hour speed and we are using a cruise control methods and we are clicking the button and it is maintaining the speed at 50 that cruise control is a process controller when we are physically processing the manual processing methods it is not maintained at 50 it may be 48 it may be 52 those process variations to be monitored continuously and we need a continuous control to make a constant it means the error to be zero the set value is 50 km per hour and the process values are maybe 48 km per hour or 51 52 km per hour therefore it should be monitored and we are using a cruise control the automated systems to make it as a process control process we will see one by one for example there is a necessary to continuously monitor and control a fuel tank using the boiler based power plants so another example this type of control is also called as a modulating control process control modulating control process controllers are are interrelated a feedback systems and proportional integral derivative systems this is what our main part here pad this is what we are going to see now along with the feedback system from the output we know this this is belong to closed loop we belong to closed loop and on the closed loop i want to configure proportional increment integral derivative this three combination is to make a error zero a process control a continuous monitoring process and doing this now. so that is uh, our study of uh, pid controllers in the process controllers we are going to talk about this proportional integral derivative controllers right this is what we have i have taken a small a closed loop system what we have here we have given commanded a value of input set value have been given this is set value have been given and it is have to be controlled by the device this three devices of proportional integral and derivative i am naming in a simple sketch of controller and then it is to be give the direction to the plant what is happening there a system we want to control what we are going to control system we want to control 
So that is there. Now, the controlled variable like speed, like motor speeds, like walking speeds, anything we take, as a controlled variable will give us the output. That is what is generated. How do we, how do we generate this? So we get what we want there. How this process we are doing, as like that, the output will be there. I am not controlling it will exceed. I am controlling most microcontrolling it should be around zero. Moderate controlling error may be there. So that is how we are doing. So therefore, I have taken this controlled variable as a feedback there. And I am giving the same to the error detector. It means before the control. I am giving one value as a set value. I am naming this as a process value. Process value. Set value SV minus PV is the error. Set value minus process value is the error. I need 50 kilometers. There it is 48. 2 is the error. So that error to be amplified, gain to be given on the controller. So that is how we drive the error to zero. That is how we drive the error to zero to make the process. As per set value equal to the process value. A simple closed loop system. This control part we are going to see how we are controlling the controller. We want, we want a zero here, error to be zero, not the minimum error, error to be zero, not the fluctuation also, not the, I want this line, I want to go for 50, this is 50, so it should go like this, it should not go slowly and reach us, I need intermediate quick processes to be there. And also not to be like this, fluctuations not to be there. So I have to continuous monitoring and I have to make this speed control to straight a fixed error zero process. So this is what we are going to see now. A controller is a device that generates an output signal that generates an output signal based on the input signal it receives. This is set value. Output signal is generated based upon the input is given. So here in reference input a desired value what we need and we have a error detector from where this controlling circuit has been given and this controller part here we are going to see. Here we are going to see P controller, maybe I controller, maybe D controller. So this all together makes the framework of a PID controller totally I am calling this as a PID controller one by one we have to see see the control signal has been given to the plant where the change is going to occur and then the output disturbances maybe the disturbance of environmental disturbance will be there force opposite force will be there so speed may reduce that we are observing sensing optical encoder sensing and giving here back According to the force to be enlarged, force to be more, to make even the disturbances, out of the disturbances we should go constant, error to be zero, that we have to do. The input signals are actually an error signal, which is the difference between the measured value, I'm, I'm given, I have given the previous slide, this is a process value, and the desired value, this is the set value. So just uh, I have given notation, we keep remembering. A proportional integral derivative controller, now we came to the PID controllers, are the three term of controllers, three term of controllers, is a control loop feedback mechanism widely used in the industrial control system and variety of the other applications such as requiring a continuous modulated control continuous control because it, it is going to change 48 51 it is going to change that we have to modify and control spruceous 
PD controls are continuously calculates an error value. Continuously calculates an error value. I am giving the notation for error value as ET. Error value. As the difference between the desired set point SP and measured process PV. So this is set value SP or SP. And applies on the correction based on the proportional integral derivative terms denoted as P, I, proportional integral and derivative respectively, which is gives us controllers. Now, a sensor measures and transmits the current value. Sensor at the output stage measures and gives the output value to the error detector. Process variable PV back to the controller. To the error detected and error we have to amplify, we have to modify, error gain to be given. Controller error ET, this is what we have mentioned here, error, error value ET at the current time is computed, at present what it is. It may vary again, again error comes, it may vary again, error according to the disturbance error comes. We have to make it possible with the disturbances to make constant. Continuous process, it's not one time, keep on running. Set point, set point, set point minus measured process variable is the error. This is what I have in the first we have told you this value, set point minus error. Therefore, I am giving some equation error equal to set value minus process value. The controller uses this error. With respect to specific time, next time it may error may vary. That is why I have mentioned as error time. With respect to single minute or single second, it is changing. The controller used this error in control algorithm to compute a new controller output signals. Again, each second it will the new controller output is keep on giving. That is why 51 it is reduced to 50. Again, if some changes are there, breaks are coming, 48 it will become. Again, it should make 250. Continuous inputs are given. A controller output signal is sent to the final control elements, such as outputs may be in the plant, maybe walls, maybe pumps, maybe heater, maybe fan, maybe our cylinders, pistoning cylinders, ignition systems, how to control the speeds, such things, causing it to maintain the change maintain the change in the constant values the change in the final control element causes a change in the manipulated variable the change in the manipulated variable example flow rate of a liquid or the gas causes the change in the process value at the last it is going to change make it fixed when we are doing this all we have few factors to maintain a perfect configurations of the system they, are, they, they have classified here the good control system will have to maintain a accuracy a sensitivity noise stability bandwidth speed and the oscillations all to be maintained accuracy must be very high as the error arising should be Corrected error rising to be error to be corrected here. Error to be corrected. Accuracy can be improved by the use of the feedback elements. We know the various DC AC motors when the switch is on, the supply is given, it is going to run. Then there is no feedback system. But we are adding the feedback system to measure the revolutions of motor. To measure what is the shift angle of a motor, 1.8, 5 degrees, 45 degrees, 30 degrees, how, where, how much it is angled, how much it is rotated, at what speed it is rotated, at what position it is. So we are using some sensors and we are identifying from the servo motor when it is connected to the feedback system. So likewise, here with the feedback system, error is reduced and accuracy is increased internally. Sensitivity, a good control system senses a quick change in the output, yes, 
every seconds, every microseconds, sensitivity to be maintained. Otherwise, it is waste. Sensitivity to be maintained, noise to be reduced. Noise is unwanted signal that a, a good control system should be sensitive. Or noise in the other higher pitches to be reduced. Stability, a stable system has bounded input and bounded output to be there. Bandwidths to obtain a good frequency response, bandwidth of the bandwidth of the system should be large. Speed, a good control system should have high speed. That is the output of the system should be fast as possible. This fast and the sensitivity more related. We have to give more fast in such a way the sensitive we can take as inputs. Oscillations for good control systems. The oscillation in the output should be constant. This oscillation should not be there. This fluctuation should not be there. To make it constant, that is our aim. Accuracy maintain, quickly sensitive, noise to be reduced, stable values to be there. Whenever we are taking stable values to be there, bandwidth to be large, speedy process, and oxidations not to be there, it is to be constant. So such a various uh, properties are there to for the good control systems. Our PED controllers. In general, I am coming to the system now, the closed loop. In general, a closed loop system has several input variables. Yes, we know, several inputs we are giving here. And several output variables, multiple outputs we can, because when the motor is rotating, we are measuring the output of position, angle, where it is, and then velocity, multiple outputs we are taken. Output variables are measured by using a suitable sensors, Capital generators, optical sensors, potential sensors, photoelectric sensor we are using to measure those things. And a feedback is sent to the controller for the comparison. From here, the feedback is sent here for the comparison. This, this sketch we know, this is a simple closed loop sketch. From here, we are going to convert it to P, I, N, D. Comparator, set, set value, set value. Here the process value will be there, measured output of the process value, order is coming out. Every second it is changing with respect to error and amplification bus, the process keep on varying. So that is a naming as a process value. So comparator, feedback is given, error detected. Here the controller, PID. PID. And then the plant process, process, plant process happening. Some disturbance will be there. Those disturbance is crossing, we need constant. And dividing this process controllers into such categories, I have used three words proportional, integral, derivative. On that, I am using only this proportional controllers only, this proportional controllers only. And then sometimes I am using the combination of proportional and derivative. That is called as a PD controller, simply a P controller, PD controller. Sometimes I am using proportional and integral. That is I am naming as a PA controller. Sometimes I want to use together only for the better results. Proportional, integral, derivative, that is PAE controllers. This one, importantly we should note. So maybe a proportional, maybe a integral, maybe a derivative, or maybe a proportional derivative, maybe a proportional integral, maybe a proportional integral and derivative. Such cases are possible. But what are the three factors we should see now? Proportional we should see, integral we should see, derivative we should see. Then this combination we can make P A, P A D, P D. So such combination we should know first what is proportional integral derivative. We will do. So the process controllers are P controller, I controller, and D controller. What is that? This one we have told this depends upon present error. I controller depends upon the past error. 
the controller predicts the predicts the future error based on the current rate of change how fast it is changing i want to reach a 50 kilometers per speed and i should run but at what speed it is reaching that 50 kilometers in the advertisement bike advertisement car advertisement we have seen reaching 100 kilometer per hour in a second in 8 seconds like which advertisements they are giving it means how the rate of change to reach the target 60 km per second we are reaching 60 km in a second the rate of change and then it will, it will maintain how fast from 0 to the speed we are reaching first we can able to reach this this is 50 we can able to reach slowly here and we can go 50 here this is 50 and this is time otherwise I can able to reach the same 50 like this and I can able to maintain so this is derivative I want in immediate and I should go not slowly taking process it is a time and a distance based so this rate of change is important to be maintained to cause previous we have to see this so did it based upon future errors of the rate of change we'll see the remaining part of the subjects we'll see you in the next session thank you